This is the High School Football America podcast for February the 13th, 2020. I'm Jeff Fisher. And today, this Pennsylvania boy is uh, thinking a lot about Keystone State football. It all began when uh, yesterday I wrote the story for HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com that the Big 33 announced the Pennsylvania roster for this year's All-Star Game. Uh, The uh, Keystone Stater is going to play Maryland once again this year. And for those of you not familiar with the Big 33, it is the... Super Bowl of high school football. Why is it called that? And I've been saying that for decades, even before I think the Big 33 used it as a a marketing plan, is that there's never been a Super Bowl played without an alum from the Big 33. That's right, a a 54-game streak. I don't think there's any better uh, in high school football, although I'm sure some people out there at uh, De La Salle High School in Northern California would argue with their 151-game win streak. But anyway, the uh, roster's out. You can check it out by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com along with the uh, Mr. Pennsylvania football uh, finalist this year. But uh, on this Thursday, we're going to use a little throwback Thursday. Um, growing up in Pennsylvania, covering the sport for a long time there, I had an opportunity to uh, to meet, greet, and uh, become friends with a lot of the great coaches that uh, have come from the state of Pennsylvania. And today on uh, Throwback Thursday, Turn Back Thursday, whatever you want to call it, we are going to uh, relive a an interview that I did back in 2012 on the High School Football America radio show with George Curry, the late George Curry, who passed away in 2016 after a battle uh, with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, uh, Coach uh, Curry, oh, he was tough. I, I, I ran into him a couple of times where he <laughs> questioned me when I was rooting for our Lehigh Valley teams in the, in the state playoffs when Berwick was a national power and uh, specifically Allentown Central Catholic was coming up. But uh, after uh, after those moments on the field, uh, George was always a big supporter. He knew that uh, I cared a lot about Pennsylvania high school football. Pennsylvania football is just uh, you know rock solid tough. You wouldn't expect George Curry to be anything more than a little gruff and tough, but uh, boy, could he win football games. 455 of them during his illustrious high school coaching career. He's number eight currently on the all-time coaching wins list in America. His record, 455, 99, and 5. And uh, this interview that I'm going to play here in a second goes all the way back to uh, uh, 2012 when he uh, came out of retirement, uh, shocked a lot of people, and returned to that national powerhouse program he built at Berwick. Uh, he built him into a uh, the tiny town into a national power in the 80s and 90s. They won three mythical national titles to go along with six Pennsylvania State championships. And boy, he did it in style. Uh, 404 of those victories came as a Bulldogs coach. And here's that interview I did with George Curry back in 2012. The late, great George Curry. Glad to be joined right now on the line by one of the best we've ever had. He's the all-time winningest coach, and he's decided, you know what, retirement isn't for me. He's coming back to uh, coach his uh, legendary Berwick Bulldogs. George Curry is here to talk to a national audience about what he did to build this uh, team and this school into one of the best ever in the country. Welcome to the show, Coach. It's a pleasure to be here, Jeff, and it's always good to speak to you, buddy. Well, you know, it's always good to speak to some guy that has done, uh, you know, marvelous things with the X's and O's, but more for the school and more for the community. So let's uh, kind of get the listeners up to speed here. Uh, you're, you're sitting on the sidelines there, uh, 413 lifetime wins, seventh best in, in America, only 93 losses. And all of a sudden, Gary Campbell, you're uh, the guy that took over for you when you left back uh, a few years ago, is going to take another job. And, and someone comes calling. Is it, so, so it's more than just that. How, how did George Curry become the new old head coach of the Bulldogs. Well, I'll be honest with you, Jeff. I thought I was retired. It, this, this was the weirdest, most intense weekend I've, I've experienced since I got out of coaching. Okay, I had a nice, soft life, Jeff. I was doing TV shows. I had my two TV shows. I had, I had a radio show, a talk show with uh, one of the top announcers up here, Jim Doyle. I said, we... It was great. And I do my camps. I run quarterback camps, uh, et cetera. But when Gary Campbell told me he was leaving, he called me. He called me. So he, he said, the coaches and the players, we all want you to take the job. <laughs> I go, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> and, you know, and Berwick School Board called me, and they were stuck. How are you going to get a coach in the middle of June? And so I decided, well, I, 
it did take me very long to make the decision because I know they were stuck. I mean, now I'm going to tell you this, Jeff. The, the only concern I had is I gave all my stuff away. And I got out of coaching. I gave my playbooks to different coaches. I work with, I still work with teams. I still do some consult. Like a coach may call me up and come down and say, what are you doing against uh, quarters coverage? What are you doing against cover two? What are you doing against, show me some of your man routes. And uh, I like to see your pass protection. So I did a lot of stuff like that, you know, consulting and going down and putting little mini clinics on. But, but to get back to the, the point here, I took the job. I went out the first day with no books, no paperwork. I said, here we go, baby. <laughs> Crank it up, Dad. And, well, and you know what? I haven't stopped since, and now this is day five is today. I'm out here getting ready to meet the kids in about a, an hour, and we're going we're gonna to go out in that field. We'll be out for four hours, buddy. We're, we're working our tail off, and, and uh, it's coming together, and I've had a chance to, to put together a playbook. And... The nice part about it is all the coaches on Gary's staff were my coaches. Uh-huh. Some of the coach with me for 30 years, 20 years. So they, and you know what? They kept my old playbooks. I, can you imagine that? <laughs> hey, they, thought, like, it, they, they thought it was going to hey, be a collector's item. They could get some money and sell it to the Hall of Fame or the Smithsonian or something, maybe. <laughs> hey, no, you know what it was, Jeff? When, when I took a job at a school up the river, Wyoming Valley West. These, these guys had my playbook when I was playing them. <laughs> <laughs> that, and they that's, never turned it in, man. That was nice uh, to do it. So, that's Pennsylvania <laughs> for you. That's the way we roll. You know, you, 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 we've got to beat you with your own game, with your own playbook. Uh, let's put this yeah, in perspective uh, for, for the listeners here because, you know, uh, football's changed a lot from uh, your first uh, mythical national championship back in 1983. You, you won it again in 92 and 95, six uh, state championships in Pennsylvania. And, and when you guys were doing this, uh, the, the game was much different. And obviously, we can spend a little time talking about how the game has changed nationally and all that. But take take us back to 1983 and USA Today. It started its poll in '82, and all of a sudden, there's this national conversation. A little old Berwick out of Northeast Pennsylvania gets uh, gets put up in USA Today's uh, the poll. There, what was that like back in the day? I mean, how, how big of a deal was that? Well, the town went crazy, but I I knew I knew it, how can you take. How do you know who's not? Even today, yep. how do you know who your national champion is? I'll tell you what. I think the thing that instigated that was we played a team from D.C. It was 7-0. We and were, We were undefeated. We mm-hmm. played this team, Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Yep. They had a pretty good team that year. And uh, I know some of the parents worked for USA today. Okay? And we beat them. We shut them out. Okay? And I think that was the first time we got in USA today. And from then on, we were always in USA Today. I mean, we and we beat some good teams. You know, I used to do this, Jeff. I would always schedule one or two teams nationally. Mm-hmm. I would always want to play. Like, I played St. Ignatius twice. I'd go down and play the best Harrisburg teams. We played out in Ohio in that Buddy LaRosa Classic. You know, they, talk, they invited the top teams in America, like in USA Today. So we got to do some of that stuff. And we did pretty good. I mean, and you know, I always say this. Like, the guy tells me, well... It's tough winning today. I mean, look at these some of these Catholic schools. They're getting kids from all over the place, mm-hmm. and, and nobody says a word about it. I, I, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. When we won state titles, we had to go through Allentown Central Catholic. Mm-hmm. You, you're familiar with that. I remember those they had, they had Seneca. They had Sarah Melly. They had Tony Stewart. They had Rashad Drayton. They had Lapidol. They had, they had like seven, eight Division One kids. You've got a good like, memory, by the way, with all those names. I could, yes, sir. <laughs> and then, uh, hey, I go back to Harrisburg. They had 11 Division One kids. They had a kid, one year named Eugene Harrington, the two Isoms. They had uh, Raymond and Ricky Isom. I mean, they had a kid named, they had, they had a uh, quarterback, Dwayne McMullins. They had Eugene Harrington, went to Southern Cal. I mean, I can name it. They had 11. We beat that, uh, Alec Cooper team in the first state title, 1988. Mm-hmm. First time Pennsylvania ever had state title championships on the field. They had 11. They had Ty Law. They had, they had Sean Dilbert. They had, Eleven Division One kids, and I tell you what, we shut them out. And you know that I think I always tell people, you are what you think you are. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, they have more talent. But there's such a thing called outfoxing the enemy, <laughs> and you can outfox them. If you can't beat them up physically, you got to outfox them with with a good game plan, a lot of formations, keep them off balance, shifting into things, motioning into things, defensively show different looks. You know, I mean, that's what we did. We couldn't play with them yeah, straight it- up. I mean, come on. 
I, and you know, I mean, it's funny. I, that's what people would always tell me about you uh, when they were coaching against you. And I'll, I'll go back to those Allentown Central Catholic battles with Jimmy Morgans. And he said the thing that always scared him wasn't necessarily your talent on the field because that was beyond, you know, being good. It was good. It was great. But he said he was always scared about what you would do in the locker room to make that adjustment. It, it, do you see yourself as that way, way that, that guy that could go into the locker room and make those changes that could, could you know, uh, grab the victory out of defeat? That's what we're all about. Yes, I'm telling you, that's that's a big part of our success, I'm telling you, because, and again, I don't mean to sound egotistical in any way, because, you know, the way I I say, our kids win the games. But you know what? And I just get, I've been preaching that since I took over now. It's all about knowledge. Mm -hmm. The more knowledgeable you are, the more you can absorb, the, the, the better playbook you can absorb, the more playbook you can absorb. I said, you know what? always going to be you'll you'll never beat yourself you'll never we don't we got to the point and i'm I'm, even till the day i retired we can call the game on the field our quarterbacks that's the way they were trained Mm -hmm. we practice all week on packaging packaging means you don't call anything in the the sideline you call it in the huddle you can give them a formation and then the quarterback comes up he reads the front it's a run play He, he runs where we outnumber them it's a pass play he knows the package for cover three, against cover three, against man coverage, against different coverages. So when you get into that, that's how we prepare our team. Now, coaches say to me, how do you do that? I say, you know what? You've got to work your tail off all summer. You know, <laughs> everybody's going to these seven-on-seven tournaments. That's a big thing in Pennsylvania. They're, they're getting 40, 50, seven-on-sevens. But that's not preparing a team for knowledge. Right. Okay? First of all, you get an unrealistic picture. There's nobody rushing the quarterback. And I've seen some seven-on-seven seven All-American quarterbacks when they put the pads on. They couldn't, they couldn't win a game. <laughs> so, and that's what I'm saying. I think you got to yep. be realistic. And But this is what we're all about. We just Our kids won a lot of games. Now, don't get me wrong. We had some good players. We always had, we always had good quarterbacks. Well, you had great system, quarterbacks. Yeah, the system made that. I mean, go back to Jake Kells. Go back to Gary McCutcheon, my first year in Burke. Went to Ohio State. I had a kid named Gary Pankis. He went to Temple. All, I had thirteen Division One quarterbacks. Okay, now, but we didn't we didn't have many Division One receivers. Okay, mm-hmm. but we had Division One quarterbacks who can get the ball to those receivers, whoever we had. And but the point is, you had to build around those guys. And when you get a kid like Ron Powers or Jake Kelsner or David Robbins, those three guys are pretty pretty special. I mean, they, especially that Powers kid, Christ. Oh. I, I expanded the playbook when I had him. I mean, he, he could handle it. So that's what we're all about. He made you look like a genius. So there's two things that came to my mind. I'll go back to the earlier question I was going to ask, because you guys were really one of the first programs to, to take on the nation, if you will. You always, like you said, tried to schedule those people. Now we have these made-for-TV shows you know, on ESPN where someone's coming from Texas to go into California or Florida's going to Washington State or whatever. What, what's, what's your thought on the, on the progress? Because, again, you, you kind of start started this now are, are you happy you know from the sidelines what you were seeing is as high school footballs developed to this kind of stature on the national stage oh there's no question i mean anybody anyone who's in high school football when you can sit home in your in your house and turn a game on and you see the top teams in texas uh, in fact even their state playoff games uh, or you can see some crossover games between this state and the other state. It's it's good. You want to see what kind of football they're playing. You see what the offense is all about. See what the defense is all about. And and, and that's what that's that's neat. I mean, there's teams in Western PA that are playing playing Ohio teams, and and you can name it. They're going out to Cincinnati playing, and but it's good. I think it's really good for high school football. Not USA Today, and 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 that really shrunk the country because everybody like you said mm-hmm. is playing each other <laughs> we're talking with george curry tonight the uh the new old coach at berwick he's back to to help out as gary campbell stepped aside uh, last week and george is just uh one of the good guys and and well respected throughout the state sometimes hated by your your opponents uh, but uh you know oh, that i'll drink to that <laughs> <laughs> but that's part of what you love and i know that so let's oh, let, let's good. talk about how you changed as you have, have you mellowed in retirement are you going to be a, a a cupcake out there in the field no holiday no screaming, no no heated. Uh, let's get to it, guys. Or or is this the same old George? Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Hey. Yes. It's fair. You don't change. You don't change, buddy. But, uh, the way I was, I will die that way. That's the way I will. I live my life. I'm I'm a, I'm a type A personality. I'm a very tense individual, and 
I mean, hey, I, I, I want it done now. I'm, everything's bang, bang, bang. You know, you got to get it, get it done now. And that's who I am. I play with, I, I, I coach that way and I played that way when I was a player. And, and that's, I don't think I'll be that. Listen, if I didn't want to win and I didn't have that passion, I wouldn't have taken this job. Right. Now, I know I did the school board a favor. I told him, I said, I'll take it on an interim basis. And I said, and don't be afraid to hire someone. You know, it's, if you see a guy down the road, you get a teacher's opening and you can bring a younger guy in, you do that. I said, but right now, I took this job, and I'm not going in just to be a babysitter. They found out on the first day, <laughs> first thinking day when I came in that first meeting. I got to tell you what, they understand. Well, you know, they, and the reason being, uh, Jeff, most of the kids on the team, I coach their fathers. Uh-huh. So their fathers told me, told them what they're in for. <laughs> yeah, so I coach their fathers, and, and they understand that. Plus the fact that they really want to play in Burke. Burke's got kids who want to play football. I got mm-hmm. 77 kids out here every night, and, and it's, it's, it's still growing, actually. <laughs> Yeah, and and folks, yeah, Berwick, Berwick's number seventeen on the all-time wins list, by the way, with uh, seven hundred forty-seven victories all time, three hundred and seventeen losses, forty-three ties. Uh, let Let's talk about that interim. I know, I know, you're saying, hey, you know, if you find somebody, bring them in. Uh, uh, this is interim, but I, I mean, realistically, what is in your mind? If 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 you put some numbers up here this this season, I mean, is this is this more than an interim job at your in your head at this point? Well, here's what I told them. They wanted me to stay two years. Can I give them two years? I said, look, we're going one at a time, guys. And the only reason I'm saying that, Jeff, is because when you're 68 years old, and I had I had four surgeries in the last five years, last seven years, okay. I mean, everything from cancer to a knee to an abdomen, okay, mm-hmm. to my hand, to my eyes, okay. So I'm just saying, if I feel good, if they want me back another year, I'll do it. <laughs> you're That's the, why I'm going year to year. You're That's the, I'm, now, you're I the lost bionic 35 man. Pounds. Hey, Jeff, I'm the, I, I tell you what. I lost 35 pounds. Okay, I'm in. I, I, go, I go four miles every day. I feel good. But you know, you never know. You just, you yeah. know what I'm saying. You, yeah. you never know. Shit, I'm not, I'm not a kid. So, <laughs> so that's the point. But I feel good. I still got energy when I'm out there. I don't get tired. In fact, I get fired up when I'm around these kids. You know? so, but... That's what we're going. That's my plan right here. You know, yeah. I, I just I'm thankful for the opportunity to to help this this football program in this town, and and we'll see what happens. Hey, Everybody. how has the town of Berwick? you know, made you who you are. I, I, I've always wondered that because to me, you, you kind of, uh, you, you, Berwick's in you and you're in Berwick, but how, how much of the town has made you as the man that you are? Oh, the, the people were, were, they're great. They want to win. Berwick people, it was, it's a football town. It's, it's been a football town. They won before I came here. I mean, you were back in the forties. They had a nice record in the forties. They had a nice record in the thirties. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, they didn't have state playoffs then, but they won in their area. They had nice teams, and I think they really wanted to win. And when I got hired, I was the, I was the seventh head coach in fifteen years. Oh wow! So I didn't that know that. Team? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I'm off one, I may be off one, but I, I think I counted seven coaches. I was the seventh, but yet I put thirty five years here. Yeah. Okay. So, and you know what? We started off. We won. The first year we were ten and one. And we're, we're seventies were okay. We were like we won like something like seventy something and thirty was our record or whatever it was. But the eighties it really shot up. You know, we, we had hundred and eight wins and seventeen losses. Okay. And boy, they really got into it. And that's when we won that first state championship, you know, that you know, mm-hmm. first national mythical title. And then the nineties was unbelievable. <laughs> I think we were like one twenty seven and 12 or 13, I'm not sure what it was, something like that. It was so something it good. It kept getting better. But, yet, but you know what happened, Jeff? What's there that? There was a lot of people, there was, there was a lot of jealousy started. Uh-huh. Like people, and other, people in other sports start yelling. People, you know, just other people in the community, football, football, football. You know, you're going to get the naysayers, and, and you're going into that problem. So that's where we're at, you know. But that's the way it went. It's... Anybody who wins a lot, they love it when you're going up the ladder, but when you're on top of there too long, <laughs> hey, we had enough of this crap. That seems to be the mentality. And I talked to Chuck Kyle at Sandy Nation. I got a lot of good friends who are up, have great programs, and we all experience the same thing. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. But you know what? I'd rather be in that post than, uh, than yeah. not a bottom. In fact, if you're on the bottom, you'd probably be unemployed. 
<laughs> yeah, amen to that. Well, you know, we were talking with George Curry tonight here on High School Football American as we wrap up. Uh, you know, I, I know uh, you, you now have gotten your playbook together and you, you found all the, the tools that you need to do this, but uh, uh, what, what type of person are you when it comes to goals? Are you a guy that's going to look at wins and losses? Are you looking at just overall improvement? And then, you know, what, what are the goals for 2012? Uh, championship. Coach? Championship. We've got to win them all. Our goal is if you don't go into a season, Jeff, if you don't go into a season and think you can win all your games, <laughs> don't go there. That's why I love you. you. I love you. No, you, sir, you, no, no you're right. Now, why would you, you're, Jeff, why would you go out to work every stinking day? Why am I down here in hot weather four or five hours every day, busting my hump, okay, if I don't think we can win? If I didn't think we can win, then stay sit the porch. You know, can't run with the big dog sitting in the porch. That's right. That's my theory. But you know what? So that's our goals. Our goals is to win. Our goal is to see kids get in college and graduate from college. That's another big thing I push. Mm-hmm. I want our kids to think think beyond football. You know, I mean, as much as I love football, I'm more proud of the fact that we got many, many kids in schools, good schools. And I, I, I think uh, when I look at I, I used to keep track of all this stuff. Of all the kids who played football for me that went to college, mm-hmm. we had like an 83% graduation rate from college. Oh, that's awesome. That's higher than the non-athlete. I talked to the uh, president of Boozer University and Bucknell University, so many schools. That's higher than the non, non-athlete, non-athlete student. So we're proud of that. You know, we got kids in every walk of life, from, from dentists, doctors, lawyers, rocket scientists, you <laughs> name it. Mm-hmm. They're in all these. And I, I got seven people that went into the ministry either priests or uh, or ministers. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and a lot of my guys go in, in law enforcement. Maybe it's because they play for me. <laughs> I was, was, was going <laughs> to say. They all my roles. Hey, Jeff, all my roles. Maybe they say, hey, wait a minute. I'm prepared. <laughs> I had more stinking rules. You had to get your hair cut. No earrings. No, no, no. We had all these crazy rules, man. You're old you know school. You're old school. <laughs> You better and, believe it. And, that, and that's a good thing. We're talking with George Curry tonight on High School Football American as we go away here. Um, you know, people like myself and the, the sports writers and all that. And, of course, you, you, you turned to the dark side. You became one of us in your retirement and started doing TV shows and radio shows. But um, right. we throw around the word legendary. And, and obviously, with 413 wins, there's only six people in America America that have won more than you at the high school football level and all that. Um, you know, 10 years from now, you know, somebody's talking about your, George Curry. You may still be on the sidelines for all I know, but let's just assume you're, you're done with this beautiful game. Uh, what would you like people to say about you? How would you like people to describe you? Well, I, just, I always have a philosophy, and, and I think they know what I'm talking about. And, and I always say, hey, use football as a, to open a door to a successful life. But the bottom line is, if they want to put this on their your brains will take you further than your legs. <laughs> and that was my saying. Mm-hmm. I said, yes, I want you to win. You're gonna get, you're, what you're going to get out of football is one thing. Discipline. How to bounce back. How to handle, with a, how to handle adversity. Mm-hmm. You get knocked down. How to get up. You're going to learn all these mental things. It's going to toughen you mentally for this world. But beyond that, I always want you to say, use your brains. Because it'll take you further than your legs. And with those two things... It's kind of worked because I tell our kids every day, your football career can end on one play. Take care of that brain and use it. Become whatever you want to be. and Use the drive you learn from football, and that's how we approach it. I mean, so I'm all about school. Football is tough. Maybe not in that order. College and then football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's the way I look at it. Well, you 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 have a, an incredible record both on the field and off the field, and I just really appreciate uh, getting to know you through the years and and watching. And I was probably one of those guys during those Central Catholic ones that hated George Curry, but uh, at the end, when you walked off the field, you had to respect him, and I, I that's the way I would define it. And I really appreciate you joining us on the show tonight, and uh, I hope the, the 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 listeners here got a kick out of a guy that that truly, folks, this is the real deal. When you talk high school football, not only in Pennsylvania but in the Northeast. He he typifies it. So thanks, Coach, and best of luck in 2012. Okay, Coach. Well, listen, hey, Jeff, i got to run out here now. i got All right. a bunch of kids that are sitting in here. We're going to get them going here, buddy. Get, get them going. Good luck. Good luck in 2012. Thank you very much. Yep, yep. we'll be. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Yep. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Coach hung up on me. It's, it's more, more important to get to practice, not talk to Jeff Fisher. But anyway. 
The late, great George Curry, there will probably never be another one like him. And uh, if you enjoy uh, listening to interviews like that, we have uh, hundreds of them on the HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com website. We've been doing the uh, uh, radio show and podcast since 2011. We really burst onto the scene. That's one of the things that kind of set the tone for High School Football America when we started doing all this audio content. So go there and uh, you can check out a lot of great coaches from around the country. I think I'm going to... dig back into the Wayback Machine uh, sometime soon, too, to play a big interview that I did with uh, Coach Mike Patton, the legendary coach from uh, CB West, uh, his son, the uh, defensive coordinator for the Green Bay Packers, Mike Patton, Patton, another one of those rock-solid, tough Pennsylvania high school football coaches. That'll do it for today's podcast. I'm Jeff Fisher, and you have been listening to the High School Football America podcast.